interviews with business owners and veteran executives who share their wisdom and expertise to help you de-stress, free up time, and make more money. Profits of IT. Welcome back to the Profits of IT. I am Jim Punzenberger, your host and the creator of the Managed Prospecting System, looking to generate new clients and new partners without cold calling, ad spend, or spamming. Be sure to check out many, uh, managedprospectingsystem.com. Got John with me here today, John. John, why don't you uh, say hi and introduce yourself to the audience, please? Uh, awesome. Great to be here. My name is John Klein. I've been an IT professional for over 20 years, primarily focused on Salesforce these days. And uh, I'm a foster kid turned founder kid and happy to join you today. Cool. So you uh, and you have uh, an organization that uh, around uh, supporting that helps uh, foster kids. Is that correct? Uh, I do. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is take, you know, I was a foster kid for nine years, and I learned a lot of different skills there that are not typical, I suppose, for, you know, what you would learn in high school or college, things like resilience, things like looking at the glass half full, making new friends constantly, trying to find solutions in the midst of really challenging situations regularly, and just, I think, having an overall optimistic outlook for opportunities rather than problems uh, within your vision. And so I, I believe that's what made me an entrepreneur and has given me a measure of success in addition to the other people who were tremendous contributors to my life. And I wanna help other foster kids kind of reframe their challenges into that context where they see that they're not a victim, but they can actually achieve some victory in their life if they just understand the tools they have on their belt that might weigh a bit, but have given them a tremendous amount of resource and uh, utilization if they just know how to use it. Cool. So is there, a, you have a, a website or how can people uh, find out more about this uh, organization? Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I mean, uh, certainly the uh, uh, founderkids.org is a great place to start as it relates to the organization directly with foster kids and then johnklein.com is also a place where I, I bring foster kids and others and I help them gain Salesforce skills, leveraging some of the tools that are out there and available, uh, try and help them get jobs and uh, just do whatever I can from a mentoring standpoint um, to, uh, to help get them off in the right direction, especially transition age youth. And these are kids kind of 16 years and above um, who uh-huh. really need to be thinking about how they're gonna make it in the world and kind of leveraging those tools Cool. It sounds like a wonderful thing that you're doing there. So, John, uh, I know that uh, you've been in the IT industry uh, quite some time. And uh, what would you contribute to your success in the industry? Or what might you say might be somebody might say it's a superpower? And how can others learn from that to be more successful themselves? Well, I appreciate the question. And something I will not say is that my recipe will work for anyone. I think that these are really unique aspects that relate to kind of our makeup, how God created us, the unique experiences we've had in life. And so what I can offer is maybe an analog, maybe kind of a parallel that someone can look at and identify a few things that might be helpful to them. I'd say my, my, journey goes all the way back to when I when I transitioned from my foster parents to my birth mom at nine years old. That was a really stressful and traumatic time for me. And I remember walking around the apartment complex where we lived and I did not want to be in my house. I could not stand being at home. And I saw a gentleman uh, playing a little Vetrex video game system, uh, playing Andro- or Asteroids. You remember that <laughs> two dimensional line art game? Uh-huh. And his is, you know, door was cracked. And I said, Hey, can I play? And he said, sure. And he was a guy in his 20s. I mean, I can't imagine my nine-year-old wandering around an apartment mm-hmm. complex today who they might meet. But this gentleman happened to be a very kind of God-fearing person and 
it worked out for me. And so he later on was kind of a nerdy type. He fixed VCRs and stereos back when they used to do that. And so he came and gave me a position helping. I learned about circuit boards and well meters and soldering irons. And I think for me, the biggest element that that showed me was curiosity, that I was curious. I always had a set of questions to ask in every situation uh -huh. with every person. And I think that also goes back to being a foster kid and just meeting lots of different people and having to create bridges with people very quickly and finding I have to have something in common with people. And even if I don't know what it is, I can ask questions to find out what it is. And then I'll create that bridge because you got to find allies and advocates like everywhere. Right. So you, I think the curiosity is really key for me. And even today, right. I mean, Salesforce comes out with 200 plus pages of release notes three times a year. Right. Yeah. There has to be an innate curiosity to be like, I want to know what this is and how it's going to help. And, and I want to accumulate those tools around my belt because I don't know when someone is going to need a pen, but I'm going to have one with me when I do. And it's worth the effort of gathering the pen, knowing that sometime in the future, somebody's going to make use of that. Um, and certainly that's, that's the whole point of my own podcast as well, is trying to just take the information and learning that we've gathered and be able to share it with others like you're doing. So I think curiosity is really key. And I think the the separate element is, is really just the ability to, um, I'd say take a little risk, right? Which is, I have a higher risk tolerance than most people. I'd say, right, whether, when I'm gonna go do something, I think first of like, how hard is it to recover from that? Like, let's say mm -hmm. none of it works out. What's right. the real cost, right? Like, how hard is it to, to get back to where I was. And it's usually not that hard uh, if you really think about it. And, uh, you know, I'm not investing millions of dollars in buildings and all of this. I'm in professional services. So the risk is fairly low. The overhead's fairly low. And I think that mentality of not looking at like, wow, that's a really scary thing, but looking at the converse and saying like, look, let's do this. And well, what would happen if it doesn't work out? Is that really any big deal? Not really. So great. That gives me an amount of confidence and uh, so the ability to endure a bit more risk, knowing that the recovery is not that difficult. Yeah, I've been through it myself. Uh, I mean, uh, I've taken risks and I've uh, had risks that uh, have brought great rewards, rewards and lost, uh, essentially lost everything from risks that I've taken in the past too. So. Mm -hmm. uh i can relate there what else do you uh so um curiosity um being a risk taker what, what else do you contribute to your success? well let me dovetail off of what you just mentioned because certainly i've i've done the same i took a risk in moving from a you know one organization to another years ago and that business ended up going under based on kind of underlying factors that were happening before i got there that they didn't disclose and it turned out to be a kind of a resume killer, right? It's like, we did a lot of great things in this business, but ultimately the business like went bankrupt. There was a lawsuit, all this kind of stuff. And so it's something you don't really want to talk about anymore. And, uh, you know, I, I went through a very challenging business sale, right? Where I was, I had two partners. They were uh -huh. great people, but not really business minded. They just wanted to own their job. And so when I didn't want to be involved in the business anymore, based on some decisions, they were like, okay, well, you can just leave. And they didn't understand the idea that I own half or excuse me, a third of like a significant asset and that we have to actually reconcile that. So I left a lot of money on the table there and which put me in a position of when you go self-employed and then you, then you don't have that anymore, you can't just go find a job. Like there's not just going to be some job that's going to pay you what you make being self-employed. This is why we take the risk, right? Uh-huh. So I ultimately had to like sell our house, move into a rental, took my savings down to zero and had to go to the marketplace every day and say, hey, I need to make $300 today, $450 today. Here's what I can do. And I need the check today. So I would leave the house and I would come back with the check every day. And what I found in that is it opened up new reservoirs of kind of innovative thinking, tenacity, perseverance in me that was a springboard into the next level of success in my life. So it was the pain and the a little bit of humiliation uh, that I experienced there that showed me that, wow, right? Like money is flowing into the 
pockets of like all of these other people. And I feel like I'm just as capable. And I found out what's the reason? Well, the reason is me. There's something that I'm not doing to uh-huh. make this happen because certainly the opportunities are out there and they're falling to people, which I feel are even sometimes less qualified than me. Uh, and so that was a really useful thing. I'd say the third thing is, is, you know, when you do find yourself on the downside of that risk where it is something significant that you, in the words of, uh, of, you know, Tony Robbins, he says, right, don't, don't endure the pain without getting the learning, right. Without the gain. And, uh, and so for me, finding an ability to say, what learning can I gather from this so I can take it as a tremendous asset forward? And it's totally transformed my life. And I think where I am today is a result of being able to kind of fall forward out of that pain and misery into, you know, kind of a new future and a new understanding of how deep that reservoir goes, um, you know, in my life. Got it. Anything else that... uh contribute to your success? Well, I'd say certainly I, I can't mention any of this without significant other people. There are just people along the way. <clears throat> Brian Buller was the guy I still in touch with him today who I met when I was 10 years old, who gave me the opportunity in that VCR and stereo shop, who got the curiosity about technology with me. Uh, you know, there was my neighbor who gave me a Timex Sinclair 1000 computer <clears throat> when I was 12 years old. Yeah, you know, my volleyball coach, Paul Wilson, who taught me, you know, uh, deferred reward, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, you know, it's better to be two hours, you know, time, two hours early than five minutes late. You know, there's all these people along the way who have been tremendous contributors uh, in my life and invested and answered my questions when I had them and, and gave me opportunities to either Nino Valmasoy in college, who put me in charge of the computer lab there so I could learn processes and Mac, Unix, PC, and just have a free environment. These people were tremendous in my life. And I don't believe at all in this idea of a self, self-made millionaire. I think it's all BS. I think none of us are self-made. We owe a tremendous amount of debt and gratitude to the people who gave us the opportunities, opened up the doors, stepped back so that we could take responsibility, gave us discretion, trusted us. Uh, that We are all a community-built success story. And uh, certainly, right, it's my appetite that drove it, but somebody helped guide the meals, guide the, uh, you know, the cuisine all along the way to keep me healthy and driven. Yes, uh, that definitely makes sense. It's uh, uh, almost, without others, there would, you probably, there would be no success. Essentially, I think what it comes down to. Uh, so do you have any final thoughts regarding this? Well, I, you know, I think for those out there who are, are thinking about, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of transition right now in the workplace, you know, I mean, they're, they're, it's estimated that over the next two years and more people will shift their positions than really ever has happened in history. Uh, and I would say, I mean, an IT career might be a great choice. I mean, there's a lot Software still continues to eat, uh, to eat the world, to kind of quote, um, I think that was uh, Andreessen, Mark Andreessen, who came up with that. And more and more of what you thought was just a standalone toaster or a refrigerator or whatever it might be is going to be software oriented. So there's going to be a tremendous need for people uh, to go in that direction and to be okay and curious and willing to problem solve around software and to create meaningful things. So I, I certainly, you know, encourage people to think about a platform that will grow. Somebody gave me some advice. Uh, I think his name, Harut Katerjian was his name. He said, you know, John, when you think about going into your career, think about kind of hitching your wagon to a platform that's already going to rise. Because even if you're average, they'll, ri- they'll raise your boat, right? They're going to bring uh-huh. in water and they're going to raise your boat. And so even the average and you're above average. And so it's going to be even better. But it's a good foundational element to minimize your risk. And so I'm grateful I did that with Salesforce 18 years ago and it continued to grow. And that's my encouragement for others is to think about, there's a lot of people hawking various, you know, everything from franchises to all sorts of different things that may or may not work out that don't have necessarily a lot of longevity or history. I would just encourage people to think about tying themselves to the right kind of people uh, and the right kind of platform 
that is going to grow and have the right values and such in the marketplace so that they can grow with it. And it's not all up to them. It's not a hundred percent of like their efforts trying to make the market and, and all of that. It's really leveraging kind of the existing wake of this platform and all that they're doing to be able to grow and build the kind of life that they want. And uh, certainly that's been my story and I'm grateful. Um, and uh, I think it's a really good thing for people to, to look into because uh, not all ideas are good ideas, even if they sound interesting. Yes, uh, cool. Well, is there a, a networking opportunity moment here? Anybody that you like, any asks as far as anybody that you like to network with? Uh, anybody like you to reach out to you? I, I mean, I'm grateful to be in a position where, you know, like my, my, my organization is in demand. Uh, we have plenty of backlog. And so we get, we basically pick and choose what we get to do. So certainly uh, I would say, right. I mean, we, we're certainly looking for Salesforce partners to assist uh, if they want to grow their own practice in maturity, not necessarily in size, uh, but in maturity and profitability. Uh, we can help if there are Salesforce, you know, individuals who want to learn Salesforce, especially foster kids. Uh, uh -huh. They can go to founderkids.org or johnkline.com and fill out the forms there. Uh, and we're happy to to assist there. And uh, I think, yeah, I, uh, otherwise, I mean, uh, you know, we have a great set of partners. We have plenty of backlog. And I just am happy to, uh, to contribute. And anybody else wants something like this where, uh, right, um, we, we got a lot a great story to tell um, and uh, happy to do it. Appreciate the opportunity. Well, uh, thank you. And thank you for uh, sharing your time today, coming on and sharing your knowledge. It's been wonderful having you on today. My pleasure. Thank you, Jim. And until the next time on the Profits of IT, I am Jim Punzenberger, your host, creator of the Managed Prospecting System. Be sure to check out Managed Prospecting System dot com if you'd like to generate leads and or appointments without cold calling ad spend or spamming thank you for tuning in to the profits of it please smash that like button subscribe and share